Okay. So uh, that's where we left off. We will move on. <coughs> and so if we have a macrocytic anemia, what is the MCV? What is the MCH? This is a tricky, tricky question. Yes. So, Blake knows this, right, Blake? Sure, Blake knows everything. He just sits back there and chills. What do you think, Blake? Macrocytic anemia, megaloblastic anemia, <clears throat> MCV and MCH would be what? I'm looking at as high, low, normal. Oh, Blake. Uh, Blake, Blake, Blake. Anybody else want to take a shot at this one? All right, Michael. Getting so coffee now here. The, the mean <laughs> cell volume would be high um, since it's macro. Um, and it doesn't say if it's normal, or if it's like normal chromic or if it's hyperchromic. But um, if it's B12, it's probably just normal. Okay. Um, there's actually no such thing um, as hyperchromic, but that's not what I asked. That's MCH, mean cell hemoglobin. Yeah. Okay. You have more hemoglobin in a macrocytic cell because the cell's bigger. Okay. What you don't have is more color because the concentration of hemoglobin can only be so much regardless of how big the cell is. Does that make sense? So this is, again, probably the trickiest question, probably the one you guys are gonna get messed up on the most, is the MCV is big, you guys always get that, because it's a big macrocytic cell. But your MCH is going to be higher. You're going to have more hemoglobin because it's a bigger cell. It's just it's not gonna be more dense hemoglobin, it's just gonna be the same hemoglobin, which makes it the same normal color. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, would this like a macrocytic anemia they can't be like um, faint or pale? Yeah, I don't know of any macrocytic anemias that will be anything but normal color. There may be some that I just simply don't know, but boy, I'm, in my memory, I can't pull up anything at all that is a macrocytic and anything but normal color okay good question all right all right so we already talked about the intrinsic factor antibodies right again if it's a b12 problem um, it could be for not intaking enough b12 it could also be that you're intaking plenty of b12 you just don't have intrinsic factor and you need intrinsic factor to be able to absorb B12, okay? Can somebody look that up? It's driving me crazy. I can't remember if it's absorbed in the ileum or jejunum. That's all right, you guys will let me know later. So here's what you're going to be looking at um, on a blood test, okay? For megaloblastic anemia, what you're going to see is all of these, and again, you do have to know what the letters mean, but as far as the actual ranges, they will tell you, okay? For example, RBCs, red blood cells, and hemoglobin, says right there, they are both low. Therefore, you know you have an anemia of some kind based on that alone, yes? Okay, so then we look at our MCV and MCH, which we just said were high in a megaloblastic anemia, and they are. So we know that this is a problem with what? No, not necessarily intrinsic factor. It could be intrinsic factor, could be a problem, in which case you would have a what kind of anemia? Huh? Pernicious is vitamin B12 is intrinsic factor deficiency, yes? Um, so you could have a pernicious anemia, which is a vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. Um, 
or you could have a folate deficiency anemia. Okay, so folate, vitamin B9, uh, or uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. That's all this really says. From here, we just have to kind of figure it out. Okay, questions? Yes? Um, normal color, why is the hemoglobin low? Normal color? What do you mean the hemoglobin's low? It's not HDV. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ann, what just happened here? You are right. That's what that does say, doesn't it? Oh, the hemoglobin's low because you do have less blood. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You might mess you up there, Ben, at 7 a.m. All right, hang on. Let me let me actually draw what's going on there because this is a um, one of those things you probably should get in your head. Okay, if you're looking at a a blood smear, right? Say this is the area you're looking at. You're going to have regular normal blood cells in there, and then you're going to have some of these megaloblastic cells. But the actual, you know, if this is you know what you would think you're looking at. What you're really looking at is you do have less normal red blood cells, so your hemoglobin content overall is going to be low. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, and again, this can get really confusing if you don't kind of draw things out exactly for that reason, because you're like, oh, you just told me my mean cell hemoglobin is big, is high. Yeah, it is, if you're looking at the hemoglobin content the average of hemoglobin content inside each red blood cell, but you do have less red blood cells in general because it's still an anemia. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's Okay. Fine. Yeah, that's, that's why I like drawing things out because you can just get totally turned around. Anyway, let's move on to iron deficiency anemia. Um, I wish we would have actually ended uh, that last part last time and then moved on to this one, but oh well, I guess they're mixed a little bit. Iron deficiency anemia, as you guys know, the most common um, anemia that we're going to have. You see that for all sorts of reasons that we talked about some of them. You know, heavy menstrual bleeding, for example. Um, any of these uh, internal bleeds, you know, the ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, which are the ulcers in the, in the uh, digestive system, <clears throat> or really in the, in the colon mostly, but... Uh, uh, Crohn's disease can actually go anywhere in the GI tract. So that's one of those things where you could have in Crohn's disease, we'll talk about that much later I think, but that can get anywhere in the GI tract so it can actually cause a vitamin B12 deficiency too because it could actually go up and affect the small intestine which is where B12 is, is uh, absorbed. Hemorrhoids, if you didn't know already, basically are small little ulcers, I guess you could call them, uh, in the colon. Um, parasites, as you see in this guy's foot, something growing down there, or running around, I guess, are parasites, not really growing, but, uh, okay, so you can see, again, there's, there's different reasons. Um, you could have decreased iron absorption, you could have iron loss and slow bleeds, that sort of thing. Questions about that? Okay. Again, this is small, pale red blood cells, so the MCV and MCH are both low. Just like any anemia, you're going to have that whole fatigue, tachycardia, palpitations, tachypnea, paleness. We'll look at colanchia, which is the spoon nails in iron deficiency anemia. That's fairly uh, Unique to it, yes. Um, to be clear, for um, normal chromic anemias, you still get pale because your blood count is lower. Yeah, because you still uh, have less blood, and and you're pale because you know you do get color from your blood. Okay, from those superficial capillaries and such. Okay, um, <coughs> alopecia, meaning your hair is falling out, not like the awesome way my hair is falling out in a pattern, but you just like pulling chunks out, right, out of weird places. So. Uh, that happens, okay? Um, also fairly uh, uh, unique to iron deficiency anemia is that tongue, right? Notice those taste buds are just kind of smoothing off, all right? So that's something, again, eh, stick out your tongue, eh, okay, say ah, eh. It's one of the things that you're looking for, 
You know, does this person have a smooth tongue? They maybe have iron deficiency anemia for a long time. Okay, and of course, pica. Okay, when people are deficient in iron, it goes back to their little lizard brains or something, and they and they're like, okay. Somewhere I heard that there's like minerals and stuff in soil, so they might like start eating dirt um, because you know they may not even know why they're doing it. They're just like, oh, I know there's something back in there, right? So I mean, they're they're maybe they remembered something from eighth grade biology. I don't know. Um, they eat weird stuff. Maybe you know, maybe some of the, some of the people that. They weren't really good in eighth grade biology, so they don't remember exactly what, but they remember minerals are in something, so they start eating all sorts of weird junk, right? I don't know. That uh, you just get these cravings to eat bizarre things when you're low on iron, okay? And sometimes it pays off, and sometimes you're just eating bizarre things, okay? Now that's not the same pica reasons that you had with uh, the. Not the same reasons like on those, what is that TV show, like Bizarre Addiction or something like that, right? Yeah. My Strange Addiction, yeah. It's not like that kind of mental illness stuff. I mean, these people just, they, they know they need that iron, so they're trying to get it somewhere. All righty. <clears throat> so, let us look at this case study, okay? Kelly, and this is kind of how I go through case studies, by the way. Kelly is a 32-year-old female. All right, that's as far as I'm going because um, this might be, oops, this might be relevant, so I'm going to go ahead and accidentally cross it out. <laughs> uh, that presented to the clinic with a fever, okay, maybe relevant. Complaints of constant fatigue, doesn't everybody? Physical exam revealed tachycardia, tachypnea, pallor, very low body weight. That sounds really familiar. The, the fast heart rate, breathing, paleness. Uh, maybe we are talking about an iron deficiency or not even necessarily iron deficiency, just some kind of anemia, right? With those, I seem to remember that. Uh, EKG was ordered, no unusual activity. Okay, so not having a heart attack, that's good. Fever was treated with NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like you know, ibuprofen, that sort of thing. Um, and a CBC was ordered as part of a further workup. Results showed, okay, decreased serum ferritin. <coughs> okay, so that's ferritin. That has something to do with iron. Uh, oh, and that's the one with the word tin in it. Okay, so decreased serum ferritin. Okay, so low iron with the tin in it. Okay, I'll get back to that because that tin reminds me of something. Okay, low hematocrit. Okay, that's definitely an anemia. That's because that's a percent of red blood cells um, in that blood sample. And hypochromic microcytic erythrocytes. Oh, that immediately tells me I have low iron, right? Microcytic hypochromic, small pale. Would the total iron binding capacity be increased, decreased, or remain the same? What the? Okay, so we never talked about TIBC. <clears throat> so what in the world is that? Well, logic would say the capacity to bind iron based on the name of it, right? Okay, so here's how I figure this one out. Okay, a couple of things you need to know. And again, stick with my weird brain here. Um, ferritin, I remember that as being the place where you store iron. So ferritin is, is storage, iron storage, like in the blood, right? Okay, and I remember that because my little house right here where I store my iron, this is my iron, these are my barbells, okay? So this is where I store my iron. That happens to have a tin roof, yeah? So that's, that's uh, storage iron in my blood, okay? Um, kind of reminds me about something else. It's like, how did it get there? Okay. How did it get into storage iron? Well, it had to be transported by something. So this is where I draw this incredibly good looking semi. 
Yeah. I know, right? I'm an artist. Never bother telling you that. There's me looking at you. Okay. So I'm transporting this iron on my little semi. So I am transferring it from the, in the blood. Again, these are bound proteins, by the way, but I am transferring it. So I'm going to write transferrin. V-R-R-I-N. I am transferring it. Right? Hey, you got to talk like that because you're a semi-driver. <laughs> so I'm transferring my, my iron into my storage iron so it can be stored in my ferritin. Ferritin. Okay? Which is my storage iron. Okay? Now, my question is, would the total iron binding capacity be increased, decreased, or remain the same if I have low... Okay, so if I have low ferritin, low storage iron, that means I probably also have low transferrin because I'm running out of iron because I do have my microcytic hypochromic, which means I have very low iron. So the question is, is well, if I have very low iron, is the capacity to store more of it high or low? Okay, if I have very low iron, what I do have is a whole lot of room to put more in. And capacity means what is a, how much can I put in there, right? Does that make sense? Because it's empty, right? Which means I have, a, I have a lot of room on my truck. I have a lot of room in my storage, right? Now, keep in mind, transferrin and ferritin are places where iron can be bound. Okay, whether it's being transported through the blood or whether it's in the bound to the ferritin state. Either way, if I don't have any or if I have very little, then I have a lot of room to put more on. Therefore, the capacity to store more is very high. Does that make sense? Anybody confused about that? So I may have talked in some double negatives there. I'm not sure. Okay, so anyway, that's how I remember what that whole total iron binding capacity thing is. And it all kind of starts with my stupid little ferritin with my tin roof for storage iron. And, you know, I'm transferring something on my truck um, that's iron. So, again, the transferrin and ferritin, these are actually um, proteins that are it, floating around the blood, and, and that's what they're for. Okay? Questions on that? Okay. <clears throat> Just like any other um, anemia, when we're looking at iron deficiency anemia, you're going to see the same kind of a lab test. And obviously, they don't all look like this, but um, you look at your red blood cell count, that is low. Your hemoglobin count is low. You also want to look at the hematocrit, that's the one right below that. That's also low. A lot of times, that's all people look at is to look at hematocrit and go, yep, you definitely have anemia. Okay, this is more specific. Um, and then you look at your MCV and MCH, that, is, that means small and pale, when it's low and low. Like I said, there's other things on there you can look at, but we don't care right now. Okay, because that's plenty to tell us we have an iron deficiency anemia. Questions? Okay. There's that spoon nail I was talking about. Uh, you will see this. Has anybody ever seen this, by the way? Somebody with spoon nails like that? Every once in a while we get some people that like CNAs in here. And they're like, yeah, I see that all the time at the elderly care home. What's the political correct word for a nursing home nowadays? long-term care Retirement. facilities retirement facility well okay that could be true of all those places with golf courses too all over the place but um anyway so you you might see that a lot iron deficiency anemia is both of these iron deficiency anemia will you tend to see it a lot more in older people because again to have your nails spoon like that 
Um, you got to pretty much have iron deficiency in for a long time before it really does that. Okay, and if you think about it, um, where do you get most of your iron from? Intake. Me. Anybody? Yeah, sure. You. Where do you get yeah. most of your iron from? How do you intake it? Like probably meats. Probably meats, right? If you think about that, as you get older, that whole uh, esophageal peristalsis thing doesn't tend to work so well in elderly. I don't know if you knew that, but that's kind of a major issue where they just they can't swallow things very well. Um, so they kind of lay off meats because that's like a heavy thing. You've got to chew really well and then swallow. Um, they do. They tend to, to lay off meats a lot. And uh, when that happens, you know, you, you tend to get low on iron and... Next thing you know, you got spoon nails. Yes, yes. What specifically causes the nail to do that from low iron? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, you have to Google that one because I don't know right offhand. Okay. Is iron like in your nails and makes it grow and then it gets Iron out? must be somewhere in there. I, I, don't rem I don't remember iron ever being in my learning about nails life. But uh, <laughs> it's got to have something to do with it, right? Yeah. Isn't meatloaf meat? Yeah, but it wouldn't be like a pure. Oh yeah, you're not gonna give somebody steak in a nurse. And what did you call it? You worked where? A senior home. That's the new word. I'm sorry, I gotta keep up on this politically correct stuff, man. Senior care facility, senior home, senior assisted living. They they go senior now. Got it. No longer is it the old folks' home from back in my day. Okay. So anyway, yeah, you can you can see these. But yeah, so I gave a meatloaf and what? And fish. Okay, that makes sense. Again, those things are a lot easier to chew, to digest. Okay. Um, last part of our anemia stuff are just a brief overview here of normal cytic, normal chromic anemias. Okay, these are things where you're you're going to have normal mcv mch okay uh, aplastic anemia is one of them and probably the most serious of all anemias because you're not making blood products inside your bone marrow that is a major major problem okay um, aplastic anemia you can confuse that really easy with leukemia okay and aplastic anemia you're just not making blood products your bone marrow, for whatever reason, has just decided to stop doing its job. Okay, leukemias, you make a whole bunch of like blast cells and things like that, which crowds out all the other cells, um, but you still get the same net result. Okay, so they're very similar, um, and aplastic anemia is obviously very uh, serious. Okay, but you do have when it does make it. You know, they are normal size. You just have a lot less. Okay? Um, of course, the post hemorrhagic anemias, we kind of talked about that before. Obviously, after you are stabbed, you will have less blood, but at least they'll be normal sized for a while, at least, until your body does compensatory things. Some of the hemolytic anemias, for example, sickle cell, okay, is one of those that, uh, you know, the, the, Red blood cells are destroyed because they're they're not the ideal shape and such, so the, the body would destroy them early. Um, and then anemia of chronic inflammation. Anybody have any questions on any of that? Okay. Keep in mind that your homework um, is pretty much everything that we've talked about up until right now. That first part of your homework that's due 